Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another uh, video cast with Llama Life. Today we have Mark Livesay with Treeline Pursuits. He's the owner and founder. And also behind the camera and the guy doing all the hard work and editing is Tyler Volkson, Volkson Media. So great to have Tyler and Mark here with me today. So we had a lot of questions about uh, how we got into llamas, why we got into pack llamas, and I've been in, into it for a while now, so I thought, you know, what better way to um, ex answer a lot of these questions that people have than having someone that's newer to it than I am and has a fresh perspective. And so Mark and I have known each other for three or four years now, and uh, he's you know, newer than I am into pack llamas and has a great perspective. So that's why uh, Mark's on here besides my friend and we're gonna hang out and have some adventures this week. So thanks for being with us, Mark. I'm glad to be here. It's exciting. And so uh, we're gonna just kind of dive into it, guys, and try to answer some of these questions. Um, you know, I met Mark, I think it was, what, four years ago? Yeah, four, because I've had my, yeah, four. No, no, three. Three years ago. A little over three. Okay. So met him at a Backcountry Hunters and Anglers Rendezvous. If you guys are not members of BHA, I highly recommend it. It's a great conservation group um, that fights for uh, you know preservation of public land. So that's where I met Mark, and uh, he was the happiest, most smiliest guy there. And since then, we've hit it off. We've been on hunts together. He's got into pack llamas and has become one of my very good friends. And so. You know, you had called me prior to meeting you there, and I told you I was gonna meet you at the Backcountry Hunters Angler Rendezvous, and you had been thinking about horses. I think you even thought about goats for a while. I did, I was looking at that too, yeah. And so, One of the reasons I was smiling so much is we just had moved there on that Monday that week. Oh, really? Yeah, we I had just arrived. We kinda, I moved to Montana three years ago, and uh, we timed it to try to get there for that ride. <laughs> Not just for you, Bo, um, but... Uh, <laughs> Just that the whole BHA thing, I decided that I had been using public lands for 30 years of elk hunting. It was time for me to start giving back. And sure. I didn't have an opportunity that much in Missouri. Um, but anyway, we packed up and moved to Montana. But the week we met was the week I moved to Montana. So I was pretty high on my, I was pretty high on my horse at that point. Yeah, that was good. And so uh, you had been, you had just bought a property, right? Yeah. And... Uh, you well, not act not at that point. We were we were in a rental house looking for property at that right when I met you. But oh, it wasn't okay. it was like four months after that we bought it. Bought that that same property. That, yeah. And so you were thinking about horses. Yeah. And you were thinking about llamas, you'd cross the path of thinking about goats. And so like what what transpired between like why did you think about getting livestock in general? Because you were a backpack hunter yeah. for, for years. Yeah. And so why did you go from wanting to be a backpack hunter to thinking about livestock? Like what took place? Well, for me, kind of what, the, the, there's a couple of things. Number one, I just mentioned, I was moving to Montana. So I just retired. Um, I like to say that word. I'm not technically retired. I still own my company. <laughs> I still own my company back in Missouri, but I don't, I'm not actively involved with the day to day anymore. Okay. So I was kind of in a kid in a candy store at this point where I was going to be like, not being able to hunt for six years because of working building and my building business. business. But now I'm this last year, I hunted about a little over a hundred, 103 days in a tent. So, um, that's a lot. But anyway, the point was I was going to go from not being able to do it to being able to do it a lot. And I had just turned 50 and I try to stay in pretty good shape. And you know, you know, everybody knows that battle, but it, it really doesn't matter how good a shape you're in a hundred days with a backpack on hunt, chasing out is tough yep. and I knew I wouldn't needed something. I, you know, I wanted to be able to hunt in the older years and I wanted to take better gear. I wanted to take better sleeping accommodations. I wanted to do things a little to accommodate that increase in days okay. um, was, was kind of part of my motivation. Um, but another part of my motivation was taking my family and some of my friends and turning it into social, you know, because like I said, I spent so long building my business, I really neglected my my social and just work seven days a week. So I just yeah. didn't. And I want to get back to that. Connect with yeah, people. I want to get back to that. Camping, so fishing. Yeah. I knew I wanted something like that. And I'd been on several, oh, I say several, I've been on probably four, maybe five trips that involve horses. So I had been involved with, and I grew up with some horses. Um, a little here and there, you know, not very much, but I have had some experience in that. 
I wasn't super excited about the horse route just because of cost, uh, maintenance, and the risk. I had two little children at the time. How old? Um, at the time was three and six. Okay. So pretty young. And so not that you can't have them, you know, I just... They haven't been around the, horses. They haven't kids, been right? around them. Yeah. What and about your wife, Amy? My she... wife had never been around them okay. and, uh, and our property set up. You know, the best use of our space and um, just what's needed to accommodate horses. I looked at pack goats for a little bit and I have nothing against them. They just, when I, my personal decisions were they, they're kind of high maintenance. You got to really be hands on with them. They don't really do well on their own. Um, and they just didn't pack enough for what I really wanted. Weight wise, you mean? Yeah, yeah. for okay. individually. And it took them. From what I understand and from my little bit of research, it takes quite a while to get them to the packing stage as far as age. Um, but I really didn't know very much about llamas until I looked into it, found your website, actually contact you. And we actually had been corresponding yeah, for about a year, a maybe a little mm -hmm. bit off and on. And then we met at BHA and I already made up my mind. I mean, you probably sold me a little maybe. on. <laughs> I, mean, I sold you hardcore. I mean, you llamas. sell everybody on llamas, but uh, <laughs> I was already sold. I'd already drank of the llama Kool-Aid and uh, that's why I, your smile's so big, because when you saw them, you're like, what are these things? Well, and, you know, I know we may be getting ahead here, but at the time, I'm thinking, I'm just going to meet Bo. I'm probably buy some llamas right there on site, and I'll be in the llama business. <laughs> and uh, I didn't well, realize well, that would be awesome the difficulties be. involved yeah. with a finding good quality, commercial grade kind of pack. And I wanted that. I. And we, we probably will get into that. There's some you know differences in llamas, obviously, that Definitely. I've learned from you since. But uh, I wanted, I wanted if, if I'm going to do this, I'm coming to Montana. I'm on this new venture in my life. Um, I wanted the best that I could get my hands on. Sure. And so uh, that was kind of my reasoning for it. But I did evaluate a lot of angles before I did it. Yeah. And just to kind of preface that a little bit more, he asked me question about question. And. Um, about horses, about goats, and about llamas, and, and I and I was able to answer a lot of them because I grew up with horses um, and had lots of experience with horses. I used to high school rodeo, believe it or not, and uh, I spent many days on horseback. I had tried goats um, for two seasons and burros and llamas, and so you know I really felt like I vetted it a lot. And he just kept probing. He's asked the right questions and definitely got the answers that he wanted. Right? Yeah, I mean, you know, and. Looking back on it, I, I mean, it just was the best decision I made. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, well, I mean, I've only loaned, owned llamas for three years now, and I've been buying llamas almost every opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> almost every llama that comes available for sale, I'm trying to buy somehow. Um, but uh, so, yeah, they, they've been, it's been a great, it's been a great. So once you decided, okay, I want to buy llamas, and you had seen them because Epa Beach, yeah, I had llamas there. Yep. You're able to handle them, work with them. Um, at what point did you decide, okay, I'm going to do this, and then what did you have to do to be able to get ready to actually buy them and bring them home? What was that process? I mean, besides writing a big check? Besides writing a big check. Um, the, I think the thing was I kind of had my mind made up with llamas, but I'd actually never seen a llama. How weird was that? Was yeah. I had already made up my mind basically <laughs> by talking to you and just researching. Without even seeing one. Without ever seeing one. a llama. But when I went to the BHA... Wow. And we got, you actually, we saddled a couple and led them around and we're right out in the front lawn of the Holiday so Inn. <laughs> I mean, yeah, literally, we were, we're huh? right in the entranceway. I'm like, this is way, and they're just laying around while we're talking and- Eating grass. Dogs are running by, they don't even get up. And uh, people everywhere, noises, honking horns, whatever. And they just never even phased them. And I was like, that even, you know, and I kind of probably knew a little bit about, but when I started seeing kind of how easy they were to just to handle and to deal with, and and I still didn't know about how to take care of them or anything. Sure. I didn't even know how easy that was at that point, but um, I just like, this is really for my, I, I didn't want, let's back up. I didn't want a pack animal that limited the way I wanted to hunt. That was the key. You wanted to maintain you're camping, hunting, and fishing the same way you are. That's right. Done. I wanted to not change my style of hunting. I wanted to bow hunt, rifle hunt, take my family. I wanted to leave those animals in the camp and go do my thing. And when I needed them to go to work, I wanted to come and get them and take them. Sure. Makes sense. I didn't want to hunt with them. I didn't want to have to have somebody along to take care of them. I didn't want to have to pack a bunch of feed in and out. And 
I didn't want to have to always camp by water sources. I didn't want, I didn't want it to change my style of hunting. And uh, obviously it changed a little, but and that was pretty much, the t that was the, the ticket. Once <laughs> I saw how easy they were to handle. So you, at BHA, you said that was- That was it. That once, was it. Once I got my hands on a couple and I took a few selfies, and sent them to my wife. That was that was the end. Of it. <laughs> my wife was more so. My wife was more. She's never been gung ho. She loves that I hunt. Yeah, she must. She lets me hunt over a hundred days a right, year. Right. Yeah. So she loves that. Amy, and, you're very supportive. And we yes, love you. Amy, we love you. And uh, but when I showed her the pictures of those llamas, um, that was pretty much a done deal. Yeah. And then uh, we came here and visited you a little later on. Brought the kids. Brought the kids, and that was it. I mean, once we saw the babies and the llamas and the, I mean, who would have known llamas would be as popular as they are today? Now my kids have llama pajamas, llama notebooks, llama pillows, llama, my my daughter just made books, llama right? stuffed animals. Um, llama sweatshirts. Movies are coming out. I mean, so now, <laughs> I kind of hate that that's happening because it's driving up the dang price of llamas. <laughs> Uh, today, believe it or not, Mark was walking through the pasture with his family and his wife. He's like, so which one of these did you sell me? And I said, probably that one. And uh, bl bl belongs to my brother-in-law. And uh, Amy goes and looks at it. He's like, yeah, he's cute. Done deal. <laughs> yeah. That's all I got to do. So, uh, I mean, it's been an amazing experience being able to watch you go through the whole thing. And I told Mark, I said, if you're going to buy llamas like from us or from anyone else, you can use this as a resource all the way through. Yeah, I think. That, and just there's so much to learn, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, what did you do? And that's something that we want people to know is like you got to find a mentor and whatever it is you do, a business, life venture, owning llamas for the first time. And it's been great to show and help Mark through that process. But, I mean, what were the first steps that you took after you decided, okay, we're going to do this? And, you know, how, what did you guys do to get ready to buy them? Well, this is, I mean, this wasn't in our script, but I'll just say this right now. Um I've never met a person in my life that's more willing to help and support than you've been with me. I mean, you worked with me for a year and I didn't spend one dollar <laughs> at Wilderness Ridge Trail Homes. You kept saying, maybe you should rent them, you know? I'm like, I don't got time to rent them. I need to own them. I gotta get going. I never rented them. I never, I just would jump straight in. Right in, the, yeah, you did. Yeah, I you? never took a clinic. Until we came and you yeah. kind of showed me a few things. Yeah, yeah. But my point was the fact that you were able, were one, well, didn't know me. I lived in Missouri at the time. And and now that I know you now, we've become friends. I see that I'm, I don't feel as special as I did, but cause you're, <laughs> you're kind of, you're kind of like that with everybody. And uh, <laughs> it, it's pretty rare. I have to say it's pretty rare. And I appreciate that. Absolutely, and, uh, man. You know, and uh, there's no way I could have cut the learning curve down um, that I did without your help. But you asked me what I did to get ready. Basically, I had your number on speed dial. And almost every step along the way, and I know you're probably hating I'm saying because now everybody will be calling. I just called you up and said, hey, I'm building this fence. What do you think? How many strands should I do? What kind of wire should I use? Bob wire? Should I use smooth wire? And you were there to answer my question. Sometimes it took a long time. Sometimes it took... A yeah. few seconds, but man, it was it was instrumental in in that. So I'm really excited. All you people that are watching these videos now that they're starting to put together are going to get this experience that wasn't available. Yeah, and I've been it telling wasn't. you this for. The He's past been telling year. us to do this for a while. Yeah, and uh, you know the cat's out of the bag. Llamas are. There's just it's the way to go. And uh, as you'll hear as we go, incredible on experience more, yeah. them, isn't it? So getting ready was just. Build your fence. My conversation, you know, I had to build a fence. And I was worried at my property where I'm at, just to give everybody an example. Sure. Um, I live on the side of a mountain. It's a pretty significant slope. It's a, it's a significant slope, enough slope that I had trouble driving a skid loader on it. So to give you an idea to yeah. where we're building the fence. Very steep. No grass. I mean, other than what's just growing up through the trees. Not like irrigated pasture. Right. Though. Pine trees, you know, whatever. So I fenced in three acres and uh, basically used oil pipe, old oil drill pipe yeah, cut. two and three eighths in, casing. Right. I used a high tensile wire, smooth wire, smooth wire, six strand, built the fence, three acres, um, which, you know, as far as yield being, this is more me, I wasn't sharing. Again, I called you about how much I needed. 
And so I probably wasn't thinking that I was going to have as many llamas as I'm thinking I'm going to have now. <laughs> so uh, I'll probably be expanding to some other operation at some point. But anyway, I have three acres fenced in. I've kept nine, ten llamas there at, at some times, and they do just great. So the space, really, it can be open pasture for, it can be, I mean, you can. Timber it, pasture. It can be, now, I, mean, I would, uh, I think they do, I actually, you told me this when I told you this, I think my setup is pretty ideal because they really like the shade, I think, of living there. Yeah. They would like um, to, they like to be in a barn setting without being in a barn. Yeah. If they can be underneath a tree um, or in some good brush, they'll like that, kind of like a deer. But we know where the sun comes through, they'll lay there. They'll lay but there. But then they'll Boom. move if they want to. Yeah. So anyway, you know, so anyway, that's what my setup is. I have a... Then you um, built a barn. I built a barn. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a three-sided... Lean to 12 by 24, 12 said? by 33. Oh, okay. And I've got half of it, one. half of it is fenced for hay storage, and half of it is open for them to get in. You did it all yourself, yeah. And I built it on skids, so, so it's pretty big for being on skids, big for being on skids, but it worked great. So, yeah. anyway, I built it on skids, so I don't know why, but. Um, and a lot of places people build them on skids so they kind of can move them, can move them, get out of uh, permitting sometimes. Yeah, that was one and then reason. Taxes I did sometimes it. you don't have to do that depending on the county and state. So yeah, so, yeah I put in a hundred gallon tank water tank. I put in. I've got a regular old cow, cattle hay feeder, small one that I put the bales in mm -hmm. so they don't scatter it everywhere. So you're feeding off the ground. Feeding That's off big. the ground and got my mineral bucket. And Away you go. To, and I'm set. It. That's. I hate to be simplistic, but. That's about all you need for llamas. I mean, it's, and then you learn how to vaccinate them. I, I did, and you, you know, again, I was a little nervous about that, but again, I just called my buddy Bo up. Did you ever come down here to show it, or do you just? We just talked about it. Already. No, oh. it's my first time. Yeah, I I, and, and you know why? The vaccination was easy. They stood there, and it was no problem. The wormings can get a little bit of rodeo ish. <laughs> Because um, <laughs> yeah. you have to do oral syringe, and I think you're doing a video or did a video on that, or it'll be coming out. But yep. so anyway, yeah, I've learned how to do some of my own medicine, which is, you know, just tremendous savings. And another thing too is, if you're going to be in it, you really need to be dialed to your llamas. Understand? I think you need to know how to do all that stuff. It just makes you better connected to them. You feel like you really are are are. Um, I don't know. I, li I like the connection that I have doing my own stuff. So just calling somebody up. And honestly, I don't, it, it, in some areas, I'm sure it's hard to find a vet that has a lot of it llama experience. It is very hard. And some vets have never seen a llama themselves. And so, yeah, you're exactly right. It's, I had somebody call me yesterday. It's like, hey, we called six vets and they live in Billings, Montana. And only one is even willing to look at our llama. And they said, we don't know anything about them but we'll come and look at it. And I was like, man, that's the same thing we ran into. And so when you find a vet, um, we bought our vet some vet books, anything, you know, llama yeah. llama books. Said, here, we'll buy these, you read them and, and we'll teach. And then we learn together. And now we've kind of climbed that learning curve and we're still climbing it obviously, but it's been really helpful. So finding well, that quick vet story. So, it, it, you know, I know llamas are new to a lot of people, but I got stopped in Montana going to a, coming to Idaho to hunt with you this year. Really? Yeah, with all the llamas in the yeah. trailer. I was weaving or something, I don't know what, I wasn't texting and driving. <laughs> I was, he said I was weaving, I just bought this truck. So I just, I don't think I was used to it that well. I wasn't weaving that much. But anyway, he pulls me over. And I said, was I speed? No. And we, so he, I think he just had, he had something that he didn't like. He goes, I need to see your papers on those llamas. I said, well, what do you mean what papers? He goes, uh, well, where are you going with those llamas? I said, I, I made the mistake of saying Idaho. Because <laughs> I was right on the border of Montana. I was still in Montana. He goes, when we cross state lines, you have to have a Coggins test. And I said, well, I'm still in Montana. I shouldn't have said that because he was got really mad when I said that. He did? Yeah, I'm like, literally, <laughs> I can see Idaho border from where I, we're pulled over. <laughs> But I'm not technically in Idaho <laughs> yet. So I think I just added fuel to fire. But the point was, I told him, unfortunately, I said, they don't have it for llamas. And they it's, don't? It's not available. And he says, son, I've worked on a ranch my whole life. Don't give me no crap. He goes, I get the papers out or we're going to have some trouble. I said, 
I said, I don't want to be disrespectful, but I think you need to go back to your truck and look it up. You're going to call and you're going to have to look it up. I said, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah. No, I would be glad to give them to you. If there was such exist. a thing. So anyway, he goes back to his car. Long story. Comes back, has to eat crow. Didn't like it at all. And, uh, but let me go. But wow. so it just shows you that even, I mean, these guys are used to stopping people with horses and obviously he, they see a trailer and they obviously he knew what he was doing with that yeah. regards. But even the, even the law enforcement, this stuff's kind of new to them. It is well. new to them. Well, and you know, Yellowstone, we go, we pack in Yellowstone a lot. And sometimes still at the entrance, I ask us for a Coggins test, Yeah. which, um, Coggins test, um, you don't need Coggins test for llamas. You don't perform Coggins test on llamas. And depending on where you're traveling to, whether it's a different state, national park, or whatever, you may or may not need uh, health certificates of some kind. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, depending on what state you're going to or where you're gonna travel through. So you just call ahead and find out if you need health certificates. Um, but yeah, Coggins test, that's a, they'll always ask for that. Yeah. And I've even asked for a branding inspection before. It's like, well, we don't brand llamas. Yeah. Uh, you know? And so it's a new thing. So being educated about that's a big deal. And it's weird to tell a, an authority figure, hey. I know. Um, I felt, and I said, man, I'm going to jail right now. <laughs> he, is, he is really worked up over this. Oh, my gosh. But he, he kind of calmed down after a while. But. So, yeah. That's, that's a kind of a funny story. Um, what is, speaking of stories, when, you know, we've kind of walked through um, – you know, why you got into llamas, you know, kind of the first steps of getting into llamas. And when you were re ready to buy llamas, what was that experience like, you know? Well, I, mean, I kind of alluded to, yeah, I kind of alluded to that before. I thought that I'd go to the BHA rendezvous. I don't know if it was this simplistic. I wasn't ready for them at that point, but I would just give you my order <laughs> and <laughs> I would get four llamas or three llamas. I originally was wanting Two llamas. I had this dream of two pack, me hunting with two pack llamas. And uh, so you're like, well, there's just, right now, I'm, there's none available. There's none available, none available. So I think I waited about, I thought it was going to be longer, but it was about a year. I think it was about a year. Yeah, maybe. and then someone was willing to. So then somebody was selling some llamas to you, a, a group. And you said, hey, I'll, I'll, um, I'll sell you, if you want, four of these boys that are coming with this group. I think you were more interested in the females or whatever that was yeah. in the sale group. But they're really good llamas, they're, you know, they, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I bought those llamas sight unseen, never even saw, never even saw a picture of those llamas, yeah. I don't think, before. Yeah, you did, you, no. you trusted me in a big way. Yeah, I did actually, now It's I kind of a crazy it. interaction. <laughs> and so, but it took, it took, um, um, you know, and I'm, I don't know if you want to get into this, but you know, I um, I trusted you to pick out, I mean, what am I gonna, you could show me a million, at that point you could have showed me a hundred llamas and I'd have picked out the absolute worst yeah, one. Yeah, who ones. knows, right? So at some point you have to put some faith in the people you're, you know, you're, you're, buying you're working from. from. Yeah. And so I, I did, and man, they, they've been amazing llamas. I'm sure you regretted getting those and they keeping are them yourself. Top in, they are super top nice llamas. llamas. For, for, uh, my, for what I need, they were perfect. High performance packers. Young, young, high young, performance. Young, heavy carrying, well mannered. Uh, <laughs> and we're gonna talk about that. Just really, really, really good llamas. How, uh, how many miles do you make pack this year? Well, they, uh, I don't know for sure about that. Man, more I, than I mean, two, more than two hundred. Oh yeah, oh, more yeah. than four hundred. No, no, not more than four hundred. They went on. I did at least a dozen trips, different trips. Yeah. So they, I, I took them on at least a dozen trips of my own. So. Um, That's a lot of miles. Yeah, I, um, you know, well, and then the first year I had them, they, you kept them for a while. I kept them for a couple part of months. your rental operation and got them in shape. So yeah. when I actually took. Possession of them in the late summer, they were in really good shape. Yeah, that year they, I, I'm, I the know, first year. they had at least over 500. Yeah, that was great start for them, and they learned a lot, and you got some training with them and everything. So I got super lucky there. Not everybody's going to have that opportunity. That was super. Although it's hard to own llamas and not have the llamas. It is. It was crazy for me, knowing I had four llamas, but they were down <laughs> in Utah or wherever they were packing. I'm like, oh, I really. <laughs> so we got them. We, 
almost within days of getting him, we went on our first trip. You did, I remember. Yeah, yeah it was fun. We took our I kids. I remember seeing a picture of you and Amy and the yeah, kids. Packed in with some friends on our first trip and it was great and we've been hooked ever since. How do your friends and your kids, you know, now that you have, you own them, did all this work to get them, did all the research and uh, have some good llamas, like how do your friends and your kids react to working with them in the back country? Well, before I get into the kids, the first thing I'm gonna tell you about getting into llamas, you'll, you'll, you'll have more friends than you ever thought you had. <laughs> The minute you own llamas, that's, that's I've got very, friends. Very that I, I've got friends that I barely know that now they're all of a sudden they're like dying to hunt. With me now. <laughs> you got hey, friends in high go, places. We should go on this hunt. We should do this hunt. We should do that. We we we, we yeah. <laughs> um, and so Wait till you have I'm not being. I, I've got some good friends, but I don't want to throw too many of my friends under the bus. But my friends don't. They certainly don't lament the fact that I own llamas. <laughs> Uh, the only thing I can say is that my llamas haven't got a whole lot of work packing meat out for my friend. Yet. <laughs> well, do they? They pack? need to work on their shooting. Uh, well, they pack in a lot of gear and a lot of beverages. A lot friend, of gear and a beer. Lot, a lot of beer. And a lot of <laughs> beer. A lot of food. Uh, but anyway, it, it, no, the friends have been. I mean, it's just. They, do your friends enjoy them? Yes, and what's great about it too, I might mention this too. You know, this is things that I think that you being in it 20 years plus like you've been, you just don't appreciate, maybe you lose track of it, but like my friends will go out and feed the llamas, go out and water the llamas, hook up the llamas, bring them up, help me saddle them. Mm -hmm. You can never do that with a horse. I mean, unless, unless it was, unless I shouldn't some say that, person. it's not true. The horses I've been around did not respond well to the saddling whole operation except from their handlers. Mm -hmm. And sense. But I'm sure there's plenty of amazing horses that anybody could saddle, but these llamas are so, it, I almost hate to say it, they don't really get attached to you. I, it, <laughs> I, you kind of want them to, but they don't. They're like that dog. It, they're like that hunting dog you got. He wants to be right next to you all the time, but he does not want to be petted. He's all business. And that's what llamas are like. I mean, yeah. and they really I appreciate that. They like to be, in, they want to be right next to you. You go out in the pasture, they're all around you. But the minute you reach for them, they're kind of like, whoa. Yeah. You know, they just they're like. They're tough love kind of guys. Yeah, they like to stay their distance. They're, um, they're not snugglers, most most of them. I feel like they're like those llamas. That, they're animals that are like, I'll do anything for you, bro, but just don't touch me. Yeah, don't. I got I got my space. I got my space. <laughs> let's work. Let's do anything. That's right. <laughs> but do not cuddle me in front of my friends. But it's funny when you snap the lead on them. Once you put that lead on them, it's like they just kind of melt into your, up. they'll just stand right. I mean, literally, then they'll let you. But anyway, they, they're super gentle. So my point is with my friends, they can be involved with them on the hunt. They're handling them, they're saddling them. I mean, by the time we finish a hunt, they're literally doing everything that I'm doing with the llamas. And that was that was kind of an unforeseen kind of benefit. That, that they would actually take charge and feel comfortable doing it? Yeah, and that you didn't have to go in the back country with like some of these trips, I took nine, 10 llamas. Wow. And that's a lot of work for one guy with your own hunting gear and, and doing all the care and stuff and trying to hunt. Yeah, it is. So the fact that everybody could get involved as a group was amazing. Do you have to give people charge, like do this, do that, or did they kind of just? Oh, I kind of, I think they were nervous about it. Like at first, I don't know if I should go out there and unhook this llama, you know, but you just give them the direction and the power to do it. They feel comfortable pretty yeah. easy. Most and once they do it once, it's done. And then as far as my kids, that, that was something that um, I thought they were going to be pretty gentle with kids um, from everything I'd read and everything. But I had no idea they were yeah. going to be as good as they were. Really? The, my, my particular <laughs> four llamas, I can only speak for mine. Maybe you can. My kids can walk up to any four of my llamas and just grab them by the neck and hang on them anytime they want. Grab them by the tail, go underneath them, play hide and seek. <laughs> and those llamas will just stand there. And... Adults, they don't, they won't let adults get that close like that. But my kids are just hanging on them constantly by the hair. Really? And they just, they love it. So one little story there too. My kids have a little <laughs> play kitchen area like in the pit. Stories. And uh, they've got a little bench set up and they've got little firewood and they, they, they treat it like a little restaurant. Like they're making mud, <laughs> mud pies and mud stuff. Mud pies? And the llamas are their customers. Comment if you've like if you made mud pies before. Yeah, so the llamas will come right up to their little operation that's in their pen, you know. Yeah, and they're just <laughs> they're making they're, the llamas mud they're pies. They're pretending that the llamas are their customers. That's so cool. And I'm in the house, not even work. I don't even fret. My three year old. There's no way you can do that with a, with most other animals. You'd yeah. just be be freaked. 
Those llamas will go out of their way. They'll do almost anything, even to the point of hurting themselves, to avoid those kids. Step if they're in a more. spot where they feel like they're gonna, um, you know, like for ex another example, we have a, a mound in our property where I, where I excavated for the barn. I didn't know this about llamas, but they love to play King of the Mountain. Yeah, they really this do. mound. <laughs> so those llamas will run up on the top and the other ones will run and just wrestle and ram jump. them off and back and forth. Well, my daughter gets up there at three years old on this mound and the llama's up there and the other one runs up there and he realized she's up there. And I mean, he contorted to every possible. Really? Oh, to totally avoid her. Never touched her. Wow. And so. Which one was that? Riddick. Really? Wow. What a, what a but anyway, I'm, I'm to myself, I'm like, man, these, they're amazing with my kids. They don't kick. You know, I'm not saying all llamas don't kick. My four don't. I have run across one that does a little bit of kicking. But even when they do kick, they've got a softer foot. So it's not as bad um, as a horse kick would be, that's for sure. Definitely. Um, and put them in the trailer. It, my kids load my llamas up in the horse trailer. Really? And my three-year-old leads them right in. And she's in the horse trailer with six llamas with the door shut. <laughs> And she's just climbing on them, hanging around. That's funny. Again, I mean, I don't want to make this too simplistic, but my kids love those llamas. They go out there, every, you know, virtually every day to just see them, play with them, feed them. And uh, it's just great. It's great that the family gets involved with them. And, it is. And when we pack, we do a lot of family pack trips now, too, with them. I, that was another unforeseen. I really, I got them for hunting. I was kind of selfish, to be honest. But now my wife, we love to go. My wife has taken them on her own now on trips. Four times this year, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, she went on one solo trip all by herself completely. And wow. then on hunting trips, she packed in and out for me with them on four different occasions. You took so, them to Yellowstone this year? Took them to Yellowstone twice. Twice. Um, so anyway, it, it, it's been a great experience with my kids. That's awesome. What, <laughs> you know, I think back about my very first experiences and the very first experience that I had with my llamas where my family was involved. I had five of them, and my family had heard that I had llamas, knew that I had llamas, seen pictures of my llamas, but never had I interacted with my family and my llamas together. And I was training this new llama that I just got, and I didn't know anything about structure or, or, or you know, llamas' abilities or breeds of llamas. I had no idea. And I start off the mountain in the Wellsville Mountain Range, climbing with my llamas, and I look back and that one llama is just laying down. And my grandpa's down at the ranch house with his knockers, looking up at me and I can hear him laughing at me. <laughs> and uh, since then, my llama experiences have gotten better. The year after that, my brother and I went hunting and uh, he shot his first ever elk with, uh, with a bow, first ever elk and also his first archery elk. And it was just, it was phenomenal. He was 16 at the time. And since then we've had, I mean, I proposed to my wife when I had llamas, when I took her on a hike with llamas. Um, so I've had just a lot of really good stories. And when you look back these last three years, like what, what is a memory that sticks out with you using the llamas for backcountry use with your family? Like one that audience would like to hear, you know? Um, well, I'll, I'll tell this one story. This is a, this is a, you know, more of a hunting slash camping trip. So my wife, since we moved to Montana, she just loves doing um, remote camping, like, <laughs> not necessarily staying in the campgrounds, just kind of going different. This is even before the llamas, but but we can't really backpack in because we've got two young got kids. kids. And we want to do it, but we also don't, my wife loves to camp. I'm gonna kind of throw her under the bus a little bit here too, but the minimalistics of backpack camping are not all that exciting to her. She'd rather have the six man tent, the cots, the cooking food, not, nice food. no dehydrating, you know, just, cooking everything up, packing the snow. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And we all know that it's not going to happen with a backpack and taking two little kids in. Right. So being able to take them in um, with the llamas and have those luxuries and packing in toys and games and things. And yeah. the kids. So that's, that's Llama part books. of it. But the story was one time it was, I'd been hunting all fall. It was not this last year. It was a year before last, two years ago when I first, first year I had them. Been wearing you, them out all season. You really, oh, really I put smiles hunted, on Hunted, hunted, boys. hunted. Kind of neglected my family a little bit, maybe. So in November, about mid-November 15th-ish or so, Montana rifle elk season was still on. And I had not gotten um, the, my bull yet. 
And, um, but I wasn't, we weren't going hunting. We just said, we're gonna go to this campground because we knew nobody would be there. We went to this campground and we decided to take our llamas just to take them to the camp. So we loaded them up the trailer and took them. We weren't, we weren't gonna pack in with them. We just came at the campground with us. And uh, since the campground was closed and everything, so it was winter time. And uh, so that morning, the next morning we're there, I said, I told Amy, I said, hey, I'm just gonna run up here and see if there happens to be any elk standing around anywhere. You know? <laughs> I'll be left Amy and the I kids drove, in the camp. Left, they, they were cooking breakfast. I literally just drove down the road a couple miles, bam, there's elk. I get out, stalk this thing down through by this creek, takes off, anyway, kill this elk on the other side of this pretty significant creek river. Creek river means a little bit of a creek, yeah, mostly a river. Waist deep, over <laughs> waist deep in the shallowest spot I could find. That is definitely a river. So I had no waders, I had nothing. And so I, I, and I thought I'd kill, so I had to wade across this creek just to see if I killed it. Sure enough, I did. So I come back, got him, I left my truck running and everything for like an hour. <laughs> so anyway, get back to my truck. I'm cold, I'm soaking wet, super cold. I go back to the camp, sit around the fire for a little bit. I warm up, I change my clothes. I, and my, my wife says, well, we're just gonna go with you to get this elk. I that said, a girl, would it be a I trooper, said, Amy? Okay, so this is our first year owning llamas. You haven't packed an elk or? Never, yeah. not packed anything yet. And so we get down to this river and it's, it's going. I said, well, the kids can't walk across this. There's no way. So we're going to have to carry the llamas across. I said, you you take Emmy. I'll take Eli on my back. Where we'll lead the llamas. So we waited. Her and I waded across with just our boots. With the llamas, went right across. No problem. I didn't know how they... It's the first time I ever crossed water with them. Big water too, right? Big, pretty big raging water. Not raging, but it was flowing pretty significantly. Wade across. It's, remember, it's 25 degrees. 22, 25 degrees. November? Bear pant waded across. <laughs> find the elk. I had to butcher this elk by myself. And you have um, the kids have the, the kids there. and everybody so there. And you just crossed the river. My kids are cold, so they're wrapped up in the tarps from the kill kit. And Emmy, my my youngest one, is four. She's throwing meat in the game bag like, like she's been doing it all her whole life. <laughs> so we loaded that meat up on those llamas and packed it back to the truck. Took less than... 45 minutes. No way. And we're at the truck with a whole llama, with a whole elk, and uh, family did it. We stripped buck naked. No uh, way. <laughs> in the truck and turned the heater on, drove home. <laughs> Good thing you didn't get pulled over there. Yeah, it was a great, it was a great <laughs> llama experience, man. And I think right then and That's there, funny. well, oh, and another thing too was that I didn't know the experience of my llamas of how much they could really handle at that point. Weight wise, right? I'd always kept it around 60, 70 pounds, no more. Well, it was so cold that all I could do was quarter this elk and bona. And I said, and then one of my kind of my studs, Maverick, is one of my kind of older, more accomplished packers. At least I thought he was, according to you. And you know, I said, he's just going to have to carry this. And it was a little over 100 pounds. And uh, I've been there so many times. I strapped those quarters on him and he acted like it was empty. Carried it out across that net and that wasn't even an issue. Was it weird to see him go from packing many miles at 60 pounds all season to all of a sudden have 100 and almost act the same way? He just had no, but now I would never put, I'm not gonna put 100 pounds on a regular basis. But right. We all remember, I, I shot this thing virtually from the road. Yeah, not so too far away. So he was only about a mile by the time we tracked him and killed him and, and everything. He was about a mile from the road. So a mile, That's 100 cool. pounds, but he, the point was we didn't have to go back. And I didn't have to spend any more time boning my kids where everybody's freezing. Um, it was snowing, <laughs> and you uh, have a tr you have a really really adventurous family. It's a cool. Story. It's a good story. We talk about that story all the time. My kids talk about it all they the time. They remember it still pretty good. Oh yeah, that's and, funny. Uh, so yeah, it was great. And, you know, that's the first elk that I had ever killed with my that my family got to see. I've been elk hunting for thir almost thirty years. That was probably a special moment yeah, for you. Yeah, it was cool. Was I didn't realize it. it you know, so anyway, it was good. Yeah, real good. Awesome. Well, that probably tops most of my stories. Mine get a little, even though yours is pretty redneck, mine seem to get even more redneck. <laughs> so I'll leave some of my stories for another day. You've had some great experiences so far. And you've taken a lot of, you've introduced a lot of people into backcountry hunting and into using llamas for backcountry use. Well, I, you know, I get a lot of, I get a, it's funny, we were, we were going to the, to the breaks to hunt this year. And Montana, we're at a, we're at a gas station. 
And the guy comes up to me and the guy, I don't want to take any, any credit away from you, Bo. And uh, this was on an instant story on shooting the bull. And it's actually on, I think it's on the podcast too. But this guy walks up to me in the convenience store and says, there's the llama guy. <laughs> and I'm cool? like, I guess from YouTube videos and some Instagram stuff or whatever. And I said, well, I'm certainly not the llama guy. I do know the llama guy, <laughs> um, but you know, so people That's pay attention. Really, really people cool. pay attention. So they I'm do. glad you're making these videos and uh, kind of, Answer some questions, and not just that. Open the door. I'm assuming you're open to questions, and absolutely. And uh, you can leave questions on the on the channel, and I'm sure you'll answer them. And and uh, obviously, if you need to ask me any questions about how to things not to do, I'm probably the guy to call. For <laughs> um, but uh, I, yeah, I, you know, the only thing I will say we didn't talk about yet, but one of the last things I will say about llamas is. If you're going to get llamas from, this is a rookie position, okay? And this isn't Bo trying to sell you llamas. I don't have any llamas for sale. My llamas, if I tried to sell my llamas, I'd probably get divorced. <laughs> and um, Not a girl, Amy. We had our first baby this year, llama, and you were willing to trade me the baby for a packer, which I really wanted. I brought that up at the house. And I was like, oh, you're going to give away our, our baby? <laughs> I'm like... Well, I didn't think about it quite like that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, long story short, we still have the baby. Um, I didn't trade him. But anyway, llamas is, I didn't realize when I first started looking at them that not all llamas are created equal. Not all llamas are created equal. And I didn't really know it at the time. And I was hearing all these stories of different people, I'm not gonna say who, would go to Craigslist, get a llama, put it in their car, take it on hunting trips, you know, in their vans and you, you, you know, yeah. I've seen lots of people, not lots, but a few people have done these kind of routes. Um, can it be done that way? Absolutely. Probably can. But the chances I think nowadays the people are a little more dialed into llamas, the chances of finding a good packing quote, Kakara llama on Craigslist is probably virtually nil. And getting a llama for a couple hundred dollars from somebody you know that knows somebody that knows somebody might turn out. But in most cases, it m probably won't. I would, my advice would be do what I did, save your money until you can get a, a really top quality packing llama and your life will be gold. Versus almost anybody I've talked to that did not have a good experience with llamas it was because of the capabilities of the llamas, the training of the llamas, the laying down, the fitness, conditioning. the conditioning, the, the go give the attitude of not wanting to work or whatever. My llamas have laid down one time, no, twice, and one of the times was we kept stopping because we had some people that were real slow. <laughs> and, and, they the were hiking, and they're like, if we're gonna just stop all the time, I'm just gonna take a break. But as soon as we start hiking, they jump right back up and start going. So. I've never really had to deal with any of those issues, thank goodness. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, it, and it was because I took my time, I looked for good quality llamas, spent the money necessary, um, and uh, and it's been a one of the best decisions I made. I can't, I'll, I'll high can't, stop buy, can't stop buying them. Can't stop buying them. You bought one today. I bought one today, dang. Oh, that's a really, really good story and good advice for people. Um, well, hopefully this is really helpful for you guys. Um, Mark is a great ambassador. He actually, Treeline Pursuits rents llamas out of Missoula, Montana. So if you guys are looking to rent llamas, definitely reach out to Mark and uh, Missoula, Montana, Treeline Pursuits. And also check out a podcast he just did um, with Shooting the Bull. Really awesome podcast, very funny. He talks about llamas and ultra marathons and kind of Mark's lifestyle and how he kind of has evolved to this Really great ambassador of public lands, and uh, I'm grateful for your friendship. Same here, bro. Um, it's been really awesome to be able to to meet you and connect through things that we love: our families, God, the backcountry, and llamas. That's right. And uh, those things have basically made us who we are, and have helped us find peace and serenity in our life. And I've told you guys that a lot. And so, people that are interested in just being around llamas. Working with llamas or spending more time in the backcountry, llamas are a great excuse to be able to do that. And they actually help families be able to go into the backcountry. That's what we do on our summer outfitting trips. We get to spend a tremendous amount of time with hundreds of people every year in the backcountry. And we get to see their lives transform. And uh, almost always people find 
clarity when they're back in the backcountry with llamas. It doesn't matter what they're doing, whether they're going to see the sights, going to go climb some peaks, going to go do some rock climbing, um, mountaineering, it really doesn't matter. Hunting, fishing, um, just the opportunity to be in the backcountry and have these, be around these amazing animals is just enriched a lot of people's lives, as it has yours. That's right. And it's just, it's just so easy to train people to be able to handle them, even if you don't have any stock experience. Um, I mean, I have a very little, to be honest. I mean, through my life, I had a little, but it just, I mean, after, I mean, I certainly don't claim to know everything, but after three years, I feel like I, I got this. I feel like, man, I'm in the, I'm, totally, <laughs> I'm in the, I'm totally comfortable with them on my own in the background. I do a lot of solo hunting and, uh. I don't know that I could do that if I had another kind of stock. If I could go completely solo and leave them in camp and yeah, pro um, probably all that a lot more stuff. difficult. So anyway, I've loved my journey and I appreciate your friendship as well. Absolutely, man. Well, we'll close out here. Um, just kind of my closing statement to everyone on the video cast is: if you are interested in packing with llamas, owning llamas, or just simply want to go on a trip, um, for people that specifically want to own llamas, I would say. You know, do your research, talk to a lot of people, and then go and rent llamas, you know. Or first of all, you could do a clinic. Mark has clinics up in Missoula. Access Wild has clinics um, up in uh, Helena. We have clinics in Utah, Idaho, Montana, all over the place. So you can reach out to us. Um, you can go spend half a day or full day working with llamas, seeing if it's a fit. And then renting llamas. If people are kind of want to slowly migrate into seeing if it's a fit for them, whether you're going to just use them um, by renting them or owning them. Go and rent some really good llamas that people um, use many miles during the season, many days that are conditioned and bred for it. And just learn all you can about it. And then um, by going out on, on your own with llamas, I think you just learn a lot and you can just decide if it's a fit for you. And there's a lot of people that just want to go with llamas in a backcountry experience and don't have the capabilities. Um, we offer fully guided expeditions, which that's kind of our base income. That's how we make our money is you know march through november we take people from southern utah all the way up to yellowstone national park and you can look us up on accesswild.com wilderness ridge trail llamas.com wildland llama treks.com um, and uh, treeline pursuits.com so those are websites we'll put the links down below for you guys to check out um, for llama clinics llama rentals um, guided expeditions fishing expeditions and you know we kind of cover all all the aspects of it and if you have questions about llama sales, how to get into llamas, or if you like the video, like it, subscribe, comment. And, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in for us, you guys, today with us. Hopefully it was helpful and you enjoyed it. Um, it's really fun for me, so thank you.